We already have 42 shares. We already have 42 shares. That's incredible. I only shared it four times. Must be. I only shared it once. It must be something tricky going on. Oh, it might. Maybe it's. I forget if I had that thing activated or not. So, welcome. Welcome back. Welcome. So, how was your Christmas? That was pretty good. That's it. That's all you got. You don't have any clever anecdote or some wild story that'll get people all juicied up and like, I'm ready to watch his daily. Nothing like okay. that. I took a southern or sledding. That's right. I saw that video. I saw, and, and I have to say, the southerner, who was a girl, she kicked my ass. She out, she out sledded you, son. She She's totally like out. Yep. What's the name of your YouTube channel? People can go to and find that video. Uh, Radioagora.net. Yeah, you can see that. Like, I've been streaming some video games and stuff, and having some interesting conversations with weirdos and and myself, like existential crises. You're going through another existential crisis? Ah, uh, every day. Oh, good. Then this is this is the right show for you with the topics that we have lined up, and we we can just dive into it because we're gonna our first two yeah. segments they're gonna be kind of short. They're gonna be like maybe ten minutes each, it's and then true. thereafter, yeah, it's it's gonna be we got something juicy planned for I ponder. We're gonna talk about gender. Also, if you're tuning in and we say something that makes you angry, make sure you comment and smash smash the like button or the hate button or the whatever button. Just smash them. Yeah, smash smash, them. smash oh. the things. Smash, smash the, the things. Th make us feel loved and, and we'll maybe entertain you for a bit. So you're watching Is Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora and Paul Gordon. And this I'm Paul is Gordon. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. I am Bodhi Agora. Agora. We are all Bodhi You're, Agora now. And this is, Bodhi. what's the date today? January 9th, 2018. It is the 9th. Ah, I, can't believe, I can't believe it's January 9th already. I don't know. I'm, I I get so sick of hearing that. I don't know if you get sick of that. It's always, everybody, When they talk about, oh, yeah, yep, it's, it's almost Easter. Can you believe it's almost Easter? Yep, yep, it's almost summer. Can you believe it's almost summer? People always say that. The front door. Time is, doesn't exist. Time does not exist. I had a story that, oh, I didn't select this story. There is a, oh, wait, no, 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 no. Oh, no, I did. It, the fourth dimension it, is ready for its close-up in the close -up? I science I, segment. I, oh, are they calling time the fourth dimension? No. Well, they are. Okay. But they're talking about, well, we'll get Paul. to it. I don't want to ruin any surprises. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the bump now for the segment that we're getting to now, which is Lozilla. When you're battling the powers of coercive associations, it's nice to take a step back and remind yourself that, yes, it's okay to have fun, to laugh at yourself, and, hey, maybe even laugh at others now and then. Welcome to Lozilla. Lulls for the lulls. All right, and he's bumpity bump bumping in, bumping and bumping in. You can't hear any of the bumps or anything, so you don't. I don't know so if what, you can. Go ahead. go ahead. What is this? The F Facebook AI's boss describes Sophia the robot as complete B dash dash T. That's what we're going to get to. That's the story that we're going to cover. Sophia and the robot. <laughs> do, you, do you have it open? <laughs> I have it open. I'm looking at it right now. All right, well, take it away. I'll follow your lead. Go ahead. All right. Well, apparently, Sophia the robot. She's she's got Business Insider all upset because she made threats to destroy all humans, and and then she became a citizen of Saudi Arabia and then rejected marriage proposals. And I think didn't they try and stone her? I don't know if they tried to stone her, but uh, you know, if I wasn't married, I may be I may be one of those that's proposing to her just just to trigger some of my friends. Send send Bob's and they get back like a circuit board. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. I believe. Never mind. I was going to say something. I won't. I'm going to try to keep this show PC yeah. and P. Well, well not PC, director. but PG. Yeah. Facebook's. Oh, you want to be PG? So, Facebook director's artificial intelligence research, Yan Li Kum. Oh, Li Kun. Uh, is not convinced. Uh, sorry, that was an honest mistake. Tweeting honest out mistake. business insiders. December interview with Sophia. Li Kun or Li Kun? Does know. she have a last name? Are you saying she has a last name? 
Oh no, it's Jan oh. Lacoon. With Jan Sophia. Lacoon. Lacoon wrote this AI is prestidigitation. Prestidigitation. Prestidig conjuring tricks. It's yeah, that's what method. prestidigitation means. Yes. I'm glad you put that there because I would not have known what that word means. I was thinking maybe he's calling it like pretentious or something. No, prestidigitation is just a fancy way of saying magic, but not real magic. Parlor tricks and, you know, like David Blaine magic. Whoa, did I just trigger David Blaine things just now? Oh, so what he's saying is it's a total scam and it's actually programmed. It's That's what really he's it. saying. So uh, he's, he's trying to get, you know, credit. Do you think for he's him? trying to get attention? Trying to get some little, little something, something for himself? Or... or he's just trying to get us off the, off the scent that this thing doesn't actually exist that it's not unchained, that it's not going to destroy all humans. So he's jujitsu in us right now. He's ninjutsuing us. Ninjutsuing. He's ninjutsuing. He's convincing us these are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> but they are. Tricks, yeah. But he's trying to convince I, us. I, I, I don't know. I, it could be maybe also because he's like, you know, he's he was part of the Facebook AI team. It could be some jealousy as well. It's, you know, I think like, I think he fell for it and fell in love with it, and then it rejected his marriage proposal. Wow! And then he wanted it to send Bob's and Virginia, <laughs> and, it... <laughs> and he got another circuit board for like yep. a toaster. <laughs> yep. This probably... isn't yours. This is a toaster. I know. <laughs> it's probably just a capacitor or something. It wasn't even the full board, right? So just the keys. So he 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 can oh, he, he can he said he concluded tech insider you are complicit in this scam dun 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 mic drop then he left the room so wow what, he, couldn't provide, he couldn't elaborate didn't provide anything to back up his claims well he threw a <laughs> lot of emotionally charged words out and wow. uh, got a lot of retweets got. 585 retweets. He got he 62 comments. Do you want to see some of the comments? He ain't got crap on Trump. No. No, he, he does not. No, I would He's say he does, he does not have anything on Trump. Dude, I don't want to reply. I want to read the replies. I keep hitting the reply button, and it keeps telling me, like, do you want to... Re <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's some of the replies here. Oh. Uh, Juanjo Bermudez ask a probing question, which I think is pretty good. Real magic? <laughs> That's a good point. No, the fake magic. As I wrote in my Facebook post, you might say there is no such thing as real magic. Yes, but there is no such thing as real AI either. Bum, bum, bum. I don't know. I'm kind of rooting for Sophia now. She's been kind of creeping me, but now I'm like, dude, why you got a harsh on her? Yeah, I wanted to rip people's heads off. It'd be I awesome. wonder though, why are we assuming her gender? We'll save that. Yeah, I want to see her come out as as a male AI. Get ready for a big surprise! Do you know that reference? Do you know no. in the promotion of the show, I wrote, "Get ready for a big surprise." Did you not get the reference? Uh, no, I didn't. Did you see, is it called Total that, Recall? He, the movie Total Recall. Yeah. Okay, the well, lady. Arnold Swollenpecker. The lady who goes into the airport, and then all of a sudden it's revealed. He's underneath the lady. So the lady is Arnold. And then he throws the head at the dude, and then she says, get ready for the big surprise! And then she explodes. Don't you see oh. the perfect... I mean, come on, dude. I, I got it all going on there because cause the title of the show is Gender Robots is Oz Spooks. You get it now? You get it? You getting the theme going on here? Dude, I, I, I work. It. You don't get it. Did you see the Total Recall scene? Not for like 10 years. A lady walks into the, the <laughs> airport. Or the spaceport, I guess. Sure. Well, that's a not lady. a transgender robot. That's just a disguise. Dude, whatever. You you assume that it's a lady, and it's not a lady. It's a dude. 
It's a dude you, with a lady out exterior, but deep inside, you, it's a dude. Do you feel robbed because you thought it was a pretty lady and it turned out to be? No, was, no, this wasn't a pretty lady. This was a very an elderly, uh, rather robustly formed woman. Oh, I'm gonna say. So no, no, it it wasn't like oh man, look at that, check that. Oh, that's not. That's inappropriate. That is. That is inappropriate. Me saying that's inappropriate is probably problematic, right? No, that's fine. Okay. We're fine with that? Okay. We're not at the triggering part yet. Well, yeah, we're getting to the triggering part, everybody. You just uh, keep your, uh, your, 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 your stuff on there. Do you want to get to the second story real quick? I've got a couple more minutes. Yeah, let's go for it. We're going to go to... Brain? Regenerating fish brains may hold the key to the NFL's concussion problem. Yeah, I mean, the helmets look like a fishbowl to begin with. This isn't Help. even your article. No, it's not. Oh, I, I don't just use my articles. I use other people's articles, too, you know. Oh. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you explain it? Because I didn't get the chance to read this. Okay, so this is from, if you go to inverse.com. Actually, if you just go to isdaily.live, you'll get a list of all the show notes. So you can go to this show's show notes, and you can see the links for all the stories that we're talking about. But uh, apparently they plan on using fish brains to... Where is it here? In the study, the researchers examined how the fish behaved after a mild traumatic brain injury. I don't, I don't know how they know that, but okay. And at the same well, time, they... Have you ever they, picked a catfish and you smack it in the head with a stick? And it that'll do it. it. That will be yeah. that will probably cause a mild traumatic brain injury. It actually kills the fish, yeah. Well, it's a mild traumatic brain injury. And right. uh and at the same time they investigated <laughs> they investigated which genes were active during the injury recovery period in hopes of finding out which genes were correlated with neuron regrowth. And, okay, now we're going to find out how they gave... Are you ready to find out how they gave the fish the concussions? Yes. They put, they put zebra fish into a device whose sole... <laughs> oh, my gosh. The sole purpose of this device is to give zebra fish a mild traumatic brain injury by dropping a ball bearing on its head. <laughs> That's Lozilla right there. That's it. That's it. The show's over, folks. I don't know if we can. I I mean, so they give him anesthesia for the procedure. That's nice. But then that's not an appropriate brain injury. You need to see what happens to the brain when it's not under anesthesia. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But both players aren't under anesthesia when they crash into each other. That's not a fair. Is it? Yeah. So so the general gist of the story, and you can read the whole story yourself, is that they're clubbing fish in the head with a a device that has been specifically designed only for this purpose. I don't I mean, the engineers, I you know, to, they're I want to I want to sit on on one of those board meetings. They me sit too. Down, like, How are we gonna do this? Uh, they have this little napkin sketch, like I'll just you just got like a little anvil and then just show it dropping onto the fish. <laughs> a little wily coyote at the top there and zebra fish at the bottom. <laughs> That's not going to work, Wiley. Trust me. I've seen this. <laughs> it's not going to work out like you think it's going to work out. But imagine being the engineers and you're doing your very important work and then, you know, some, some dude shows up in a suit or dudette in a suit. Uh, I don't want to assume anything. And they show up and say, hey, guess what, everybody? <laughs> We're going to design a device that's going to knock zebra fish out. Let's get on that. <laughs> whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that is. A, that'd be my life's uh, mission right there. Right there. I'm like, uh, kind of... You imagine going home that night and telling your wife what it is that you're working on or your husband or whatever the case might be or whatever. Oh, my gosh, I can't say anything. Your significant other, your life partner. Your your non defined entity that or cohabitates, friend. or your what? friend, or your friend, or yourself, or your cat. 
Either way, you go home, whatever you define as home. I don't want to limit your definition of, of what home is. And, a, and you have well, to tell whatever it is or whoever it is. Well, you don't have to, but you're going to. I mean, I mean, I would. I'd be like, I'd be sitting in traffic. I'm like, I want to get home. I want to go talk about this. I want to go home. And no, I would not share it on the phone. I would want to say it face to face. I'm designing a device to knock out zebra fish. Hey, <laughs> come on. You want, this, this does bring up an interesting point, though. The NFL does have a massive concussion problem. It does. And you want to know what will actually solve it? What's that? No Indeed. more football. Yep. I knew you were going to say that. They are destroying the game with outrageous rules. That is, that is weagly. Oh, oh Josh, Josh Busnell said, mutated sea bass had to come up at least once or sharks with lasers on their heads. You know, yes. you're right. <laughs> we didn't. We, well, we now reference them thanks to you. So we got the mutated sea bass, and we got the sharks with lasers. So, so we got that. Yes. We're we're going to end this segment. We're going to do these. Normally, we do these segments a little bit longer, like twenty minutes each. But but no, we're going to go to our 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 one minute break here, and don't go away because we're coming back in a minute, and we're coming back. What are we talking about? Fourth Dude. dimension. Wait a second. We just did the eye science story. We just did Lolzilla and eye science. We got them yeah. both done. Well, look, they're both on the site. They're listed. Under yeah, Lozilla. you're. They're right. They're. They're. You know what it is? It, they're no. listed in the wrong place. That. That's. That's what it is. Oh no no no! Never mind. Oh, I see. I. I know what I did. Oh, man, I know what I did. But it's okay. We will go to the break. And when we oh. come back, we're going to be talking about the fourth dimension is ready for its close-up. And this is going to be a difficult segment for you because... Time! Uh, yes, it's all about time. And and, and where, do you, where do you learn about the material that was created in the fourth dimension <laughs> stick 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 with the show folks because when we come back we will be triggering bodhi now in in i ponder we're going to be triggering everybody but in i science we're just going to trigger bodhi we'll be back yeah. in one minute if you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora unless, of course. <laughs> You are listening to iState.tv Biz Daily, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.iState.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now let's get back to the show. You are listening to Is Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora and Paul Gordon, featuring Lozilla, iPonder, and iScience. And now here are your hosts, Bodhi Agora and Paul Gordon. Huh. Here are your hosts, Bodhi Agora and Paul Gordon. And now we have a nice little, I don't know if you see like the scenes and the backdrops and how they all change. Have you noticed that? Watching. Yeah, I got, it's a little delay, but I got it. Okay, that's Thank good. You. So we're going to just play the bump because we want to get right into this. We scour the interwebs in search of the strange, the useful, the bizarre, the entertaining, and scientific news. Welcome to iScience. Welcome to iScience. My name is Paul Gordon, and I am here with... Bill Nye the Science Guy. Yep, yep. This is Bill Nye the Science Guy's little son... Billy and I, the uh Stu baby. The baby science guy. Nobody nobody slept with Bill Nye. No, that's true. You were adopted. <laughs> <laughs> you were adopted. So it was just you and Bill all those years. 
You know what? Well, I ain't even asking questions. Nope. Nope. What happens in Bill Nye stays in Bill Nye. <laughs> hey, can, we get a, can we get a sponsor to Arnold Palmer? You know what? That is awesome. an Arnold Palmer. But also, uh, this is a sponsor, but it's not a sponsor. I'm drinking tonight. I'm drinking Java Monster here, folks. There you go. Got the Java Consum Monster going on there. Consume Java Monster. Actually, this stuff is good stuff. I have fibromyalgia. And believe it or not, this stuff really it gives me it gives me a bit of a hum. It 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 lessens my pain. It makes mm. me more alert. But I have mm. to use it sparingly. Like maybe every two maybe or three days. Maybe every two days, or three can, days. I can. Whoa, that was weird. Oh, that was weird. Okay, now I got an echo I, going on. Did you do something different on your end? No, I just hummed. Don't hum. Humming is interfering with my thought process. Meanwhile. Back at the fourth dimension. Do you have the story open? You want to you cover you, this? You want to do this? Yeah. So talk of what? Go, go ahead. Yeah, Can go I ahead. Go Can I go now? Can yeah. I just take it away? Okay. Talk of the fourth dimension has existed for some time. <laughs> you get the it's reference. It's not a discussion. It's an old discussion. In time. And scientists have created a material <laughs> in the fourth dimension called time crystals. Not undifferent from Joe crystals. What are Joe crystals? I'll tell you after the show. Okay. Uh, two research terms. I look forward to that. You know yeah, what? Show's over, it. folks. <laughs> I'm going to get right to the Joe crystals. Google Joe crystal and look at the images. Um, two research terms have found a way to photograph the fourth dimension. And the whole universe is talking about it. Okay, so maybe just a few eggheads here on Earth. But that's my... hyperbole, notwithstanding, that's a you, lot of... You know what hyperbole means, hyperbole. right? I have to watch you. It's a giant bowl. No, hyperbole. You know what hyperbole means? Hyperbole. No. It's a really hyperbole big is using over-the-top, exaggerated language. It's the bowls they use for ramen noodles. It's not. It's not. Yeah, I'm looking up Joe Crystal, by the way. So oh, no. <laughs> Joe Crystal appears to be a bald individual. Detective Joe Crystal. Police culture straight out of gangland. Is that no. is that the that's not him? No, that's not it. Okay. <laughs> I don't okay. know who you that's are. Off Joe. Safe search. Huh? You have to turn off safe search. Okay, never mind. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> We're gonna go back to the crystals. Let's go back to the time crystals. Yep. So they Safer. managed to photograph a mysterious fourth dimension. So two teams in the U.S. and another in Europe have shown the existence of a fourth spatial dimension, which is actually my understanding of time. So I'm not that triggered by this. Oh, um, that's disappointing. Kale Rechsman from Penn State University f said, Physically, Science! we don't have a 4D spatial system, but we, have, we can access... 4D quantum hall physics using this lower dimensional system because the higher dimensional system is coded in the complexity of the structure. Uh, maybe we can come up with a new physics in the higher dimension and then design devices to take advantage of the higher dimension physics in lower dimensions. That sounds cool. In layman's terms, 3D Thank objects you. cast 2D shadows. So 4D objects should cast 3D shadows even if the 4D object is imperceivable. I can't even process that. That that was too much. I want to um, go back to Joe Crystals now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Although they, if I find out that there's something really horrible, I'm probably going to burn this show. But anyway. Uh, the two teams created two custom-designed two-dimensional experiments to generate an instance of the quantum Hall effect, with res which restricts the movement of electrons, which allows us both to perceive and measure them. So they actually haven't done it. They just lied. No, 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 no. There's no lying. It's experiments. Two-dimensional experiments to expose the fourth dimension. That makes no sense. They, they, they're working on stuff. Don't, that doesn't make don't. sense. No, they saw the fourth dimension, dude. Why are you got to do this to me? Why can't uh, you uh, just run with things? Seriously. I am. I am. Just, just take it in and and enjoy it and and savor it. This to me. Okay, so do you want run with further explanation yeah. from Bro Alchemist? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the fourth dimension. First, it's impossible for it to exist. Ooh. 
As it is impossible for a square to be inside a line or a cube to be inside a square. Uh, I, I, that seems depends, feasible to me. Depends on your perception and what your definition of a square is. My perception but, is reality, so... But, but, using Boom. the previous logic, we would be able to try imagining it. No shit. Uh, we can try to comprehend it by replicating how we progress from the first to the third dimension. We didn't. We did. We've always been in three... No, 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 no. But, but, but we didn't perceive. We only perceived the first dimension. And then we perceived the second. And then we what? perceived the third. No, we didn't. We were dots. We perceived dots only. This and isn't then like we a perceived Flintstones of... cartoons. No, that's not. And how then things... we perceived Star Wars movies. That's the way it worked. First, we were dots. Then we were Flintstones cartoons. Then we were Star Wars movies. And now okay, so... we're Doctor Who. So we built the second dimension by placing lines beside each other. Or intersecting each other. We built the third dimension by placing the square 2D on top of each other. But we don't have a word to describe where we do put... Where do we put the cube over 3D? I, it's not beside or above or below. Let's just call it J. Now we can place cubes J with each other. That's the fourth dimension. See, there you go. Boom. Proven. Okay. It's just Done. Another if we exist in a fourth dimension, we should be able to see it in 3D. Don't even try to imagine as it will hurt your brain. Another interesting thing is if you are on the fourth Which dimension... Which I can you, testify to. If you are on the fourth dimension, you can leave the 3D universe but still observe and interact with it. If God does exist or ghosts, they should be in the fourth dimension, which still lines up with my idea of time. Uh, good luck trying to perceive it with your 2D sight. We don't have 2D sight. We do. We have, Everything is 2D. Everything is flat and predictable Everything is dots, really. Everything is dots. If you consider the actual mechanics of the eye, but what we actually perceive and can compile and can use... Perception is reality. Right, so it's 3D. Yeah, But it's also 4D because we have the concept of time in our head. Right. So it's not possible for us to juxtapose these, these ideas. It's just not a spatial concept yet. Interesting factoid. When I was about 15 years old, I wrote a song... And that song was called Looking for the Fifth Dimension for a Dime. Oh, you were already way ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So when I'm listening to this, I'm like a bunch of plebs right now. bunch of plebs. Always. Get at my level. Always. What would the fifth dimension be anyway? Who the heck posted that huge comment? What comment is that? Oh, we got a juicy comment? Oh, we got to dive into this. Uh, yeah, for, uh, I'm not going to read this. Why are we not reading things? Okay. Well, it's from Rod, Rob, Roger, Roger Gertz. From Hi, Roger. Ella, Museum of Science, Qualitative Management Officer, Secretary General, the Honor, Honorable Justice, Dr. Roger Anthony Gertz, La Traviata. To oh, wow. Well, a hand, a commending. Sir, you're welcome. Let us help you. If you have a doctrine in health and science, please speak to me. If you're not... If not, you're uninformed. Again, making America great. Again. What? Is... Subject, hemp, marijuana, cannabis, legalization. Oh, Due this to... is a... Oh, we got ourselves a spam uh, comment? That's awesome. Hey. I don't hey, think it's a... Roger. Thanks. It's Polymath, awesome. qualitative management. This is Slow like down. poetry. Uh, Listen. I'm gonna... Okay, I'm going to read this segment. Ready? Is the preparation of the cannabis plant, is the preparation of the cannabis plant, true, intended for use as a psychiatric drug and as a medicine, intended for use as a psychiatric drug, whatever, and a medicine, false cannabis, as often, as often as consumed for its psychotic, psychoactive and physiological effects, effects, effects. There you go, man. That's freaking poetry right there. Thank you for the poetry. Really appreciate it. Please don't post again. I want what he's on. <laughs> Dude, he is on a he's on a tear, I'll tell you that. <laughs> he's on something. That is some that's some quality. So this is did, 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 uh, I I'd like to imagine that Roger actually took the time to type all of but I'm thinking 
I'm thinking that maybe this was a cut and paste in. Maybe, uh, uh, he did. maybe he it was a cut it. and paste in. I think we're it. done with the segment. We're He's ready honor- to go. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you, do you have anything more to say about this? Because I really want to get to the last segment. Because the last segment is really where I want to spend. No, the bulk I was just of impressed by the fucking oh, by the freaking. Uh, wow, I, we we we're we're trying to produce uh, <laughs> uh, p- at least a PG thirteen show. <laughs> but you try. You know what? For you, you you've done pretty good so far. So you know what. <laughs> Little clap for Bodie. Little clap. Little clap for Bodie. Hit the Good like job. button. Good if job. Good job. You get a participatory award, <laughs> participation trophy, whatever. That's all you yours. You tried. <laughs> you tried. That's right. All right. So we're going to go to our last break here. This is just a quick one minute break. Gives me time basically to promote the show. To another group of people. You can and, help us by promoting the show yourselves. Share it. Yeah, to your please page. do, uh, man. Please, please share, like, and all that. Jared, I see you watching. You better be sharing. Craig, Craig, you better be. You, Craig, you definitely better be sharing. And Walt, Walt, I know you're sharing. You got to be sharing. And all I'm the rest talk. of you. Because we've gotten like, you want to know how many views we've had so far? How many people have coming in and out of our universe? Now, this is. This hasn't updated in a while, actually, so I don't know. But, but a, a, a little while, about ten minutes or so ago, it was like four hundred eighty-four. So, so share this, folks, and we'll be right back after these words. What? You haven't subscribed to iState.tv's YouTube channel? Are you insane? Get yourself over to u.iState.tv. That's you as in unique. And subscribe now to get all the latest video updates coming out of iState.tv. And since you're already there, you might as well hit that bell to get immediate notifications as soon as the video goes live. That's u.iState.tv. You as in unique. We'll meet you there at u.iState.tv, where video meets the iState. It's all fear and loathing in the state of unstake based land, but that does not need to be the case. What are the stories you're missing that might counter that fear and loathing? You'll find those stories and more at iState.tv, your home for news, views, podcasts, and more that exposes the reality of power that shares opportunities for tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations. Go to iState.tv now and be sure to register on the site to get daily updates sent directly to your email. You are listening to Is Daily Tuesday with Bodhi Agora and Paul Gordon, featuring Lozilla, I Ponder, and I Science. And now here are your hosts, Bodhi Agora and Paul Gordon. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I had a little bit delay because uh, Bodhi asked me a stupid question during the commercial and it kind of gobsmacked me. But I recovered, and I'm not going to repeat what the question was because I don't want to offend anybody, and you're about ready to be offended. One way or another, you're going to be offended because I'm going to kind of lean on one side, and he's going to kind of lean on the other. So I'm going to offend some people, and Maybe Bodie's going to offend some people. What's that? I might bring the upset. Oh, you might bring the upset? <laughs> okay. So where we're going to set this up is that we're going to go through two stories real quick. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on these. We're just going to just going to throw these stories out there just to kind of set the tone. And I'm just going to read these real quick. So the one is from Pink News. Same-sex couple could soon be biological parents after a huge scientific breakthrough. A milestone, a milestone has been passed on the way to producing sperm in a laboratory. In a laboratory, okay? According to University of Cambridge's developmental biologist, Azim Surani, who was speaking at the Progress Educational Trust Annual Conference in December. I bet you that's a fun place. If uh, further steps are made so same couple, same sex couples can use their DNA, well, that's a if further steps are made. But either way, I'm not going to linger on that. Can use their yeah. DNA to produce sperm or egg. It could make the law less discriminatory. For example, a Mississippi judge ruled less. Okay, whatever. So, so there you so go. Men, men can have babies together, and women could have babies together. That's the bottom line here. That's that's fantastic. 
So men can be women and women can be men. Okay, 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 don't get, don't, wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. I just, this is just to juice things up and, yeah, we're, we're going to fall back on it. Don't worry, we're going to fall back on it. And then we get to the second story here. And that is uh, great barrier sea turtles are turning 99% female. So on some beaches in the Grand Barrier Reef of Australia, climate change is causing almost all sea turtles to be born female. That's not normal, and it's not good for sea turtle populations. It could mean the extinction of that group of animals, the biggest population of green sea turtles in the world. Now, here's the, here's the, here's the money shot. Ready? Okay. Ready. When a sea turtle lays a clutch of eggs, the sex of the embryos inside have not yet been determined the embryos inside respond to the temperature developing as male if colder and female if warmer wow so yeah. is it really extinction or is it a, is it an ascension to a new plane of existence it, well you know, I mean, you know, I always thought about this when they were talking about it could mean the end of human history, the end of humankind. And like, you know, like, OK, just say that humankind ended today. I will have lived to be 49 years old. OK, I mean, I don't want to die right now. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, yeah. I lived a lot longer than a lot of other people. So it's like I died at 20, 49. It, that's it. Even I, even I've gotten better off. I'm I'm better than vast majority of human history. Like I've got a good chunk of my life. Yeah, yeah. So like, if I die, I mean, if all of human, all of humankind dying today, I, the the important factor for me is that I died. No right. offense. And just, most of the people that are worried about human history and all that stuff, they're really just insecure about themselves and the things they're concerned about are so far in the future. They're just being dicks. That is. Well, I mean, we're, 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 you know what? I, 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 I can't just let this go. I want to address this. This is about identity. This is about, do you have an identity built up in the strength of your own convictions? Do you stand on your own preferences? If you don't stand on your own preferences, if you don't have the strength of your own uh, convictions, then you have to develop an identity that's bigger than yourself because you have no self because right. you haven't it's, come to terms with who and what you are. It's dependent on others' perception of you, and that's something you can't control. Right. But it is about I, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I really want. I base my life on spooks. I follow principles. Why do I follow principles? Because they're principles. Right. So my critical I, thought ends right there. I follow them because they're principles. And I carry myself in the gender debate based on the length of an inseam. <laughs> okay. Explain that. That's a provocative it, statement. I like it. And we're bringing I, it I back to gender. Great. I don't actually. It's it's a mockery of a, of a, of a conversation I was um, confronted with earlier today about how men are, can only be men and women can only be women because there's distinctive men's clothes and women's clothes in the modeling industry. And don't forget so language. Don't forget language. Oh, and language. There, there, was, uh, there, a, there was a thing where we're talking about in, I think it's more in Canada. I don't know if the na the folks, in, the, the, the indigenous folks of, of, in 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 the United States area, have the same kind of group that's forming. But among the natives, there's this thing called the two spirits, and they're clinging on to this idea of of the two spirits. And so somebody was some on one person was using that to say, "Hey, listen, the idea of of there not being really clearly defined gender roles is not really a new idea. They had this idea of two spirits." So somebody countered that, "Well, you know, I looked into it, and you know, the wording is." A male who thinks he's a female. So even though even they know, it's like you're using language, <laughs> right? To you're to definitions and and common observations of words in a current context, talking about an old context in a language you don't even understand. Right? Yeah, you have no idea. Like, okay, no, that those definitions, they, they they've been translated to English, but do they really 
express what they thought. And that's it. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. But but you can't think, know that unless you spoke the language. I don't think they really cared. And I think the vast majority of people don't really care. I think the vast majority of people don't really care about a lot of things that uh, a lot of entities around them make them feel like they should and make them feel like yeah. there's a lot more hype and stuff. Well, it's all hype. But there's, a, there's a lot more stuff going on that really is. I mean, at the end of the day, okay, you see a dude, and the dude is dressed like a lady, and and it's not like a, it's not like a transgender that's like it's it's not like Blair White or whatever her name is, like it's uh, just a cross dresser. Well, even if some some transgenders, they eh, they look pretty male even after the transition. They you you know you know some of them but you can tell. No. Some of them but then, don't. <laughs> but then the other thing is, there are some women that you think are transgenders, and they're not. <laughs> so, yep. But for the that. most part, you see people, and and yeah, because because we have this we have this natural tendency as human beings to feel comfortable around what looks like us, what acts like us, what seems to affirm our identities. So because there aren't a whole lot of people that maybe look maybe ambiguous I'll say those people you might tend to make fun of them but I'm I I don't know I think the majority of people they don't care I don't I think they just they may snicker or something and walk on by you know but and I'm not saying you should snicker I'm not a snicker but I mean I think that's yeah. about the scope of what most of of this is but and I think a lot of people, since we are on the Liberty Principle page, a lot of people are concerned about the laws that aren't being passed. Well, there are laws that have been passed, though. So, in, in other countries, in other subcultures. Oh, right, right. Well, it's the not one, this mass the, movement. The, the one conversation that you and I were both part of that was about Canada, and it was about Canadian laws that have been passed. They haven't been passed in America, though. Right. So what you have in America really is social pressure. And I don't understand, okay, I'm not really cool with social pressure. I mean, me me personally, I'm not cool with social pressure. Like that one actor who he wouldn't ki kiss a transgender woman, and so now everybody's like, you're horrible, blah, blah. I do not right. approve of that kind of social reaction. But no, I'm also social. not trying to pass a law to stop it. And if you don't like that social pressure, apply a counter. Right. That's all you got to do. And you know what? Right. If you don't, if if the counter is not as strong as the – well, guess what? That's the culture you live in. That's the reality. Right. You can't or you'll create that reality. Get out of the limelight. What's that? Get out of the limelight if you don't want to take if, – if, if you're up on stage, if you're a performer, if you're doing a show, if you're doing whatever – you're opening yourself up to criticism of every action you yeah pray. Yeah, absolutely. If you can't handle heat like that. You're not. You shouldn't. You, you shouldn't be doing it. To me, in a lot of ways, this gets back to what I said before about every. I, I mean, I. You know how you. I, I understand when people get an idea, and it's like a really important idea to them. They tend to see. They tend to see the world through that idea, and I may be guilty of that. So. Uh, I'll, I'll acknowledge I could be very well guilty of that. But everything for me keeps coming back to this owning your preferences thing. Because what you have here is you have a group of people that say, this is what I think culture should reflect. They're, and now I'm not talking about the folks who are calling for laws, whether whichever side. If you're calling for laws, you're out of the conversation for me right this second. I'm just talking about the people that are they're in favor of this social pressure or that social pressure, and they build their notion that people should think this way on on these principles and these ideals and these morals. That well, why? Well, because of the morals. Well, why those morals? Well, because of the morals. You, they, they, they become self-referential proofs. Rather than yeah. simply standing on their preferences and saying, you know what, I, I, I kind of, you know, I, you know, and you can spend time and take a while to root exactly why you feel that way. But I mean, I, for me personally, uh, the way I feel about it is I really don't like to see people 
mistreated or disrespected for how they choose to be, especially if they're not hurting anyone. Why? It's just how I feel. There's a root to it, even if you don't... See, there is a root to that. Even if you can't access it, there is a root to that. The root to it for me is the idea of suffering. If you're causing needless suffering, if you're picking on people, if you're um, basically not going out of your way to be an asshole about something that doesn't affect you, I automatically kind of root for the underdog in a way because I don't want to see them suffer needlessly because I don't want to suffer needlessly. So it's really a reflection of how I want to be treated and I want to... So so let me try and root that for you. Yeah, okay. you root for me. You probably understand me better. No, I'm not, I'm not saying... I'm not making a definitive, uh, you know, papal decree here. I'm just giving you my opinion. That's it. Nothing else. So my opinion is what you're talking about here is you perceive, and I think rightly, that if you you you, you have a difficult time having people inflict suffering upon you, uh, and you would like to be part of a community in which inflicting suffering on you is considered a bad idea. That way you <laughs> avoid having that suffering inflicted upon you and you would recognize that where suffering is celebrated where where inflicting suffering is celebrated then that means that you're further away from living in a community in which inflicting suffering is is frowned upon let's just say sounds about right so you yeah you're you're, you're satisfying a preference which is i prefer not to deal with suffering I prefer not to um, perpetuate it. Right. And, you know, I, 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 I have a Christian perspective about transgenderism and male and female, and, and I'm very comfortable in that Christian worldview. It, it serves me very well. I, my Christian worldview aligns with my preferences very nicely. But I'm not delusional enough to be able to say to somebody that my Christian preference, my Christian worldview is the absolute worldview. I believe it is. I believe like 99.9%. Okay. I, I can never get to 100%. And, right. and who knows what will happen tomorrow if I suddenly go from 99 to 1. I don't know. But I'm saying I have a view that transgenderism is just, it's just wrong. It just doesn't fit into God's plan. I have a view that God did design male and female and that the roles should be, I will say, not as, as not nearly as rigidly defined as they are, but probably more rigidly than you'd want them to find. But I understand that I'm operating within my framework of preference, and I have right. no desire to try to impose that perspective on others. I, I, I want to be part of the influence process to influence culture to more closely uh, align with my worldview. I, I, want, I want to have a fair chance in the, in the marketplace of ideas, so to speak. But I have no desire whatsoever to go around screaming at pr- people when they say they're a woman. No, you're not. I, I I don't. There's no need for that. There's no need for me to go around screaming at a woman who used to be a man. No, you're not a man. I mean, right. if I get to know her and she says, "So, Paul, what do you feel? Do you feel like I really am a woman?" I'm probably gonna have to say, "No, I I think you're a man." If if I get to know her and I have that type of relationship with her, where she really wants to know what I. But other than that, she doesn't need to know that. She doesn't. I I I'm just gonna. You want to call yourself a potato? Great, you're a potato. I mean, if you ask me seriously, I'd be like, no, you're not a potato. But hey, you know, and I think that when we go around and we're screaming at people, you're not a man, you're not a woman, I think that's what you're talking about. That's inflicting unnecessary suffering on people. No matter what you view, let them alone, man. Right, exactly. Like, fudge off, you know? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. I got I got no issue with you, you know. 
I, I, I there's so, there's, there's so many. Uh, even the, uh, I want to talk about the Christian perspective. Cause, Go ahead. Uh, an important part of, of Christianity is the teachings of Jesus. And what would, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus treat transgender individuals? He, he, he wouldn't have one way that he'd be treating them. It would depend on the individual and the circumstance and how the individual came to them. And there may be a circumstance where Jesus may say to someone, you're not a dude, you're not a woman. But I don't think that he would do that most of the time. I, it would depend on how, you know, how deep he was walking with them, where they were at, and their relationship he with him. The crowd as the, we're all the sons and daughters of God. You know, Jesus wasn't running around to all the rich people saying, you can't get into heaven, you can't get into heaven, you can't get into heaven. Now, he would give sermons in which kind of made it somewhat clear it would be difficult. And he gave sermons where he would be describing the nature of uh, marriage between a man and a woman. He had described that. But he wasn't going around targeting individual homosexuals. Ultimately, he left it up to the individual to decide. There is still the essence of free will and choice, and all he was doing was explaining, uh, 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 well, parables, stories, and ideas of what may hap- like what the path leads to, or what you know. Well, let me let me go back to the rich person because I was going to make a point there that may go to what you're talking about. So while while he wasn't going around to each individual rich person, a rich person runs up to him and he says, Jesus, Jesus, I want to follow you, man. What do I got to do? He's like, I'm following the commandments. I'm doing everything. And Jesus knew his heart. And Jesus, this guy came to Jesus and asked him a very intimate, personal question. I want to follow you. And Jesus knew exactly what it was that was impeding his progress. And yep. he and it was his stuff. He knew that this guy's stuff was his real was his real idol. So he said, "Give everything up, and follow me." And he knew he knew what he. But 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 if the guy if he saw the guy and the guy was just walking past him, he wouldn't have said, "Hey, rich guy, you can't follow me because you won't give up your stuff." Right. Do you understand? Does that make yep. So pretty simple, uh, and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of Christians could do some good by understanding that. Yeah, because it, really, it really reflects badly on that community, at least in my eyes. The judgmental nature. Which well, it, it's not. It's I'm, I'm going to tell you that that judgmental nature is not unique to Christians. Oh, <laughs> I of course not. Find it in almost every. What's interesting is I be- yeah. I belong to a lot of different groups. Go ahead. <laughs> Abrahamic religion. <laughs> well, any Abraham, any religion, all of them. They, they, uh, 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 the certain parts of Buddhism and, and Shintoism. I, I think that have- I, I think that if you really got to know, know Buddhist Alan. communities, that you would find these strains probably exist. I just I don't know that oh, for yeah. sure. I don't know Buddhist communities. I'm just saying, I I all belief systems, all groups that are centered around belief systems, whether it's anarchy or a particular strain of Christianity or conservatism, or progressivism, whatever, any group that I've ever gotten to know, and I haven't gotten to know all the groups, so I'm not going to definitively say this is true of all groups that are based, that are formed around belief systems. Every group so far that I've gotten into has shown this tendency to become extremely judgmental, puritanical, and a uh, little, little definitional Nazism. and Literally. <laughs> Dogmatic. Well, dogmatic. Yes, exactly. And they start to eat their own and almost every group that I've ever been a part of. So it's a strain in, in all groups. But when you're part of a group that you have the prevailing cultural power, then when you tend to do it, you do a lot more damage. So for a long time, Christianity was the prevailing cultural belief. So... That's why you saw Christianity do a lot of damage in America. But look at what's happening in countries with Islam. Okay, so is all of Islam like that? Is that really what Islam is? No. Um, Especially when people are crying about Sharia law and when really... It Sharia uh, means law. So they're saying yeah. law, law. 
<laughs> but but they're also trying to say that they're trying to instate it in in America and all that. But really, what they're doing is fulfilling the need for mediation in their own specific community. Yeah, we we Christians we we actually have groups like that. There's a group called Peacemakers, and yep. it's a Christian mediation group. It's like Sharia for Christians. <laughs> <laughs> so you know when I saw the thing, I re- I remember at the time when I first saw this story, I was like. I was still in the conservative milieu, so I was still easily triggered by the word Muslim, uh, you know. So I'm not anymore, but, uh, you know, I, I saw the news initially, you know, you know, they're practicing Sharia law in Texas. And, you know, uh, some some Texas woman, polit- local politician woman was, was, was making a stand to outlaw Sharia and, like, as I got to understand it, okay, it was a mediation center right. where so, Muslims went to get their disagreements settled by a Muslim mediator. Now, what does Christ tell you to do? Christians, what does Christ tell you to do regarding law? He tells you never go to a non believer's court. If right. a non believer sues you, for your coat, give them your coat. <laughs> you don't want to be caught before that court. And if you have a problem amongst yourselves, settle it amongst yourselves. That is that is Christian Sharia right there. Yep. Which Sharia just means law. You're you're triggered by a word, a word that in an Arab simply means law. That's it. Christians have law. Unfortunately. Christians and Muslims and other religions that have their own particular law. Uh, They try to enforce their law, which is supposed to be a voluntary agreement between people who believe the same thing. They try to force it on people who don't agree with them about (laughs) their world views. And that's where you run into problems. And I think that's where you run into problems with gender. Gender is a social construct. I'm just here to say it. It's. I don't want it to be a social construct because it kind of muddles things up, and I don't like it. It, it. it doesn't meet my preferences, but I can't deny reality. Sex is sex, DNA, yep. and even even on the DNA front, overwhelmingly yes, we're male, we're female, genetically, physically, but there are hybrids even there. So even that's not always cut and dry. I. I personally believe that having a more clearly defined male role and a more clearly defined female role is is more conducive to <clears throat> the kind of community that is going to have a traditional family structure. I believe in the traditional family structure, not objectively, not scientifically, but I kind of I kind of suspect that it's a good model. You got feels for it. You're personally invested in it. <laughs> well, I think it's more than just feels, um, but I'm not 100% scientifically sure of the facts as far as the degree to which family is necessary for the type of society that I want. Now, the society that I want is not a society of family. Family builds the type of society that I want, a society that has people who have, well, they're 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 somewhat reliable. They're somewhat trustful. They're somewhat dependable. Uh, they have uh, stability about them, so that things are a little bit more predictable, a little bit more secure, which enables me to prosper when I have people around me that I don't have to worry about trying to stab me every five seconds. So that's why I find family useful. But I'm not a hundred percent sure that the you know, the nuclear family model. Actually, I think that is a problem. I don't think the nuclear family is the best family model. I think the extended family is the best family model. Yeah, and and there's <coughs> evidence to show that, especially if you look at just legal proceedings and the way everything's structured and how the divorce rate and the way uh, the supposed nuclear family is supposed to work and how it doesn't. Yeah, I don't think the nuclear family is the key. Don't get me wrong. I I want a father and mother for the most part, but I don't want to. It's very powerful. It's very powerful when everything is right. Now, what I 
it's very powerful when everything is right. And but at the same hand, the problem with the nuclear model is, I guess you know, it really comes down to to dogmatism again. Okay, yes, I think the, I think the 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 family structure, a family structure where you have uh, a father, a mother, children, parents, grandparents, cousins. You have an extended family that you're regularly involved with. That's to me is the ideal, but I'm not going to get religiously dogmatic so much about that, that when other realities are emerging around me, that I feel the need to ostracize them, demean them, demoralize them. You might actually even learn something from them and improve your own model. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, in America, until pretty recently, you know, I, I don't want to, I, I think that generally speaking that, that kids don't do as well with single parents. And, but I don't think that's, I think that's more due to economic reasons and just the workload. And yeah. There's, there's a lot of things that, you know, you know, the cause and effect thing. Okay. We can see that kids with single parents don't do as well. Does that mean that the sing that the problem is that, that it's a single parent or the situation that a single either way what whatever the case we take that information and then we demonize single parent pa single parents and we we make them feel like they're doing something wrong and that's not cool see that's the problem that we get into it's like we take our beliefs our which which and I will say I think for the most I'm going to say this, not 100% sure of this statement, but I believe that all of our beliefs are based on our core uh, preferences. The, but we don't have access to all of our core preferences. We don't. We don't. We're not. It's a process that never ends. This, this process of self uh, awareness to understand what your preferences are. But we take those beliefs, and we put our flag in the ground and we stake out our territory and we declare war on anyone that doesn't fit within that belief. That's why I like, I think you and I, we can have discussions about gender and we don't agree. And I don't yeah. think you and I trigger each other when it comes to gender because not as much anymore. <laughs> Well, well, yeah, maybe you know. In the actually, in the beginning, actually, I was a little bit more triggered in the beginning. But <clears throat> you know, at the end of the day, when you when I really think about it, it's like, is 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 the battle for the definition of gender a hill I really want to die on? No, not not really. I I <laughs> I kind of believe that if I'm right, as I think I am, not a hundred percent sure. I kind of believe if I'm right, if you leave humans to their own devices. You're going to see emerge again and again and again. You're going to see anomalies here and there. You're going to see cultures here and there. And it's not going to be like universal. But by and large, I think you're going to mostly see males in the gender sense, not the sex sense. Males will kind of fulfill certain range of roles for the most part. And females will kind of fulfill certain roles for the most part. And there's going to be exceptions and there's going to be hybrids and but by and large, you'll see that. That's my belief. I, I, I have no way of knowing that for sure. Right. Until, yeah, there's, there's really no way to... There's no authority on it. There's no definitive way. People are going to do things. People are going to make mistakes. And people are going to find ways to make it work. I would rather support people trying to find a way to make it work than to tear down someone trying to make ends meet. You know what I mean? Yeah, I will tell you this. That if I have people in my life... Okay... I have somebody, I, I, I don't have any, I can't claim to have transgender friends right now. It's just, that's just the, the way it is. Uh, Actually, you, you, you joke and chat with one of them on my friends list. Which one? Rose. Rose? Mm-hmm. I don't remember Rose. Oh, you were joking about the um, holy whatever, what, I forget what post that was. You're joking with her. I actually know a, a few folks on Facebook. I'm talking about in like my real life, but I know a few transgender folks on Facebook, and I get along with them just fine. Uh, <clears throat> I, but if I have if I have a friend who's transgendered, 
and I have a friend who is a Christian mom with her traditional family, and my transgender friend is there for me, is trustworthy, is reliable, and then my Christian friend, she's not trustworthy, she's not reliable. I'm going to probably gravitate towards my transgender friend because trust, trustability, reliability, dependability, uh, yeah, these things matter to me more than whether you happen to be transgendered or... Because ultimately we're human. Ultimately we're all human and what matters most is... I, well, I, well, in, in the in the in the secular sense, I'll say what matters most is: uh, Do I feel like if I invest my trust in you, that you will turn it into crap? Right. And if I feel that you won't, I'm probably going to develop a deeper relationship with you. And then beyond that, then is okay. Are our interests aligned? So between trust and interest, those are the most important things to me. And yes, I, I'm sure that I could easily become close friends with someone who happens to be transgender. Well, and here's a huge thing, too, is at any, any marginalized subgroup of humanity or anything like that, especially transgenders right now, they catch a lot of flack. And in this moment, a lot of people, they get gobbled up by the left. And the left pushes for laws and pushes for this and pushes they, for they that. Use, they, they use want, them. As shields. Those are the ones, right. So it's really important for liberty-minded folks, if they want to keep perpetuating this liberty mindset, is to try and be not necessarily inclusive, but at least understanding and understand their plight and help show them that they might not need government and that government is using their emotions and playing them for their own end. I'd say meet the person where they are, who they, for who they are, and... Uh... I mean, you may be uh, someone who's transgendered and their whole life is about being transgendered and they just demand of you and demand of you and demand of you. You know, I'm probably not going to have a good relationship with that person, not because they're transgendered, because they're no. a nerdle. <laughs> but I, I'd be willing to bet if they weren't transgendered, if they were something else, whatever it is, they're probably going to be just as annoying. It's not the transgenderism that makes them annoying. There's something else about them. There is an <laughs> insistence on them that you must love them and accept them and embrace them. And if they're not transgender, if they were Christian, they would probably be the insistent Bible thumping, smash you yeah. on the head kind of Christian. It's yeah, anyone like that. It doesn't matter what they are. It's, right. Yeah, it's, <laughs> anyone it's, like I that. Got, I ain't right. got time for that. I think, By my teacher. Uh, we, we could probably go on another hour for this, but we've reached the end of our show here. And yeah. I actually, I probably would love to see this show go longer, but I have a lot of work to do tonight. I have, I have a little contract that I have to work on tonight. Make some, make some, make some greenbacks, pay for the show. Because yeah. I, I pay millions and millions of dollars to produce this show. So, I mean, yeah, you could tell, right? You that's why you should go to agora.threadless.com and buy some t-shirts to support me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I was thinking. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, you need to support Bodhi. <laughs> Actually, uh, 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 every Thursday, and I will be here Thursday with, with, with Lou Sander from the Freedom Fiends and also uh, our Thursday co-host, every Thursday I try to wear a Bodhi outfit. So yeah. I will have hey, an Agora. For a quick brainstorm. We should get everybody on the is daily, whatever. And have like a sat, like a weekend show where we all hop in. Like maybe like once a month or something. Yeah. Something crazy. Or we could do it Friday night. Oh no, we can't. Cause Niz does a show Friday night. Yeah. But like a Saturday Plus afternoon. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Pretty rad. Yeah, it'd be, to get all the hosts together. That'd be pretty neat. You can all play Minecraft and build an anarcho community. Yes, build an anarcho community, exactly. Where transgenders live next to Christians. And the only <laughs> thing they care about is 
did you did you get the diamonds? Did you is that is that is that is that what you want in Minecraft? Which so, did you get? You did, did, did you mine some diamonds? I don't care about anything. Just tell me, did you mine the diamonds? Okay, great. Then we can be neighbors. <laughs> I think that's a good place to sh shut this down. So, that's so that's that's really what it all comes down to, folks. If you want to have a good neighbor, and you're both uh, agreeing that you're going to uh, mine diamonds. Did you mine the diamonds? If you mine the diamonds, great. You're a good neighbor. And if you didn't, I don't care who or what you are. Otherwise, you're not a good neighbor. And on that front, uh, we'll be back. I'll be back tomorrow night with the one true Niz on Is Daily Wednesday. We'll be doing Newsfire. We'll be doing Skynetter, which is dystopian tech. And then Liberty Tech, which is, of course, Liberty Tech. And I will also watch for me on my I think I'll do it again on my personal Facebook page. That's Paul Gordon. Uh, if you friend request me, I'm I'm pretty generous as far as accepting friend requests unless you have something crazy on your Facebook page and I get to define what crazy is. But by and large, if you friend request me, I should re uh, accept your friend request. And tomorrow I will be doing um, headlines you may have missed. Every day I do headlines you may have missed at 12.30 p.m., and I try to cover as many headlines as I can in a 20-minute period of time. It's a race against time. And I know you're a big fan of the show, Bodie. I know. I love it. I know you do. Of course you do. And on that note, we'll say good night. I still don't have a cool call sign or anything to end the show. I have to work on that. So we'll see you tomorrow. This is Paul Gordon, and this is... Bodie Agora. Bodie Agora. Good night, everybody.